<sighs> what time is it? No, 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 no! Has this ever happened to you? Hibernating for four months after a wild Christmas party and then waking up in the middle of a cyberpunk dystopia of 2021? How could I have prevented this? You should have been prepared with the Nano Breaker, a totally accurate simulator for a far off future of 2021. Wow, thanks, random voiceover. No problem. That'll be $50. Oh, for f. Hey, the Pyromaniacs. It's been a while. You know, there's something weird about being in the year 2021. There are so many sci-fi stories set around this time period, so it's bizarre being right in the middle of what for so long has been seen as the far-off future. Granted, this isn't exactly a new phenomenon. 2001 A Space Odyssey is pretty far removed from what space travel is even 20 years after it was set. But honestly, that just makes these stories even more fun. There's nothing better than a cheesy sci-fi movie set in the futuristic year of 2011. So of course, this trend is in video games as well, and luckily I found Nano Breaker, which is here to scratch that cheesy alternative history sci-fi itch. Nano Breaker is a hack and slash released in 2005 by horsemen of the video game apocalypse Konami. It was produced by Koji Igarashi, who you might be familiar with if you know anything about the Castlevania series. In short, Igarashi is a legend. He worked on most of the Castlevania games from Symphony of the Night and onward. He was also the one behind the Bloodstained series, which is basically a new series of unofficial Castlevania games. He also apparently worked on the Japanese localization of Scribblenauts. That doesn't have anything to do with anything, I just thought it was interesting. Anyway, the game was actually made in the same engine as Castlevania Lament of Innocence, and therefore has a lot of mechanical similarities. I should probably play Lament of Innocence to make sure if that's true. I meant to do that before writing this review, but I didn't. That was stupid. Why did I do that? I don't know. This game's totally historically accurate story is that in 2001, the US government started a program to take all of the most brilliant scientific minds in the field of nanotechnology and place them on an island called Nanotechnology Island. I mean, it's the US government. Do you really expect them to be subtle? Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. After 20 years of progress, the nanotech on the island started to glitch and mutated all the scientists and military personnel on the island into mutant cyborg zombies. You play as a cyborg super soldier named Jake, which is easily the most badass name for a cyber ninja. Rider, get me. Sector Zero. Jake. Yep, totally fits. So, equipped with an experimental plasma blade, the totally memorably named Jake is sent on a mission to rescue the last living scientist on the island, so she can stop the spread of this biomechanical virus. At certain points in the game, Jake is confronted by his archenemy Keith. Wait, Keith? Keith? Really? You named the villain Keith? Keith. You know, oh, watch out for Keith. Listen, Koji. It's fine if you want to give vampire hunters lame, normal person names, because the most popular one of those guys is named Abraham. But when you're dealing with the power fantasy of every edgy preteen from the 90s, you gotta add a little more flair to these names, dude. <laughs> the game's your typical hack and slash affair. Fight hordes of enemies, pull off combos, and unlock more advanced combos throughout the game so you can fight hordes of enemies more efficiently. The combat here is pretty solid. As with most beat-em-ups, you start with a heavy attack and a light attack, which can be strung together to make more powerful attacks and combos. You also have this very helpful whip attack for grappling enemies, just in case you forget that this was made by the Castlevania people. The combat all comes together pretty well and has a really fun feel to it all. That being said, this game is no Devil May Cry. The combat can feel a little stilted and clunky if you're more used to modern beat-em-ups, but personally, I adapted pretty quickly. Granted, even with the less bombastic combat, the game makes up for it with copious amounts of gore. They made sure that when a hit connects, you know it. 
They also added a pretty decent dismemberment system that changes how the enemies attack you. Like if you cut off their legs, they'll crawl at you, and if you cut off their head, they'll just kind of wander around swinging at the air. It's pretty simple in practice, but I still found it pretty impressively made considering when this came out. So yeah, this game can be pretty fun. But the thing is, it's also relentlessly brutal. Health is extremely sparse in the levels, so you really have to stay on your toes in combat. Enemies have the rare chance of dropping health, but it's not exactly a reliable way to replenish your health. While the AI isn't exactly the smartest in the world, it's really easy to get chip damage to death if you're not careful, so the lack of reliable health pickups is a bit of a problem. Nano Breaker is a conflicting game for me. It's clunky at times, soul-crushingly difficult at others, and the story isn't exactly anything to write home about, but in the end I still enjoyed my time with it. The game exudes a certain PS2 era charm that I just can't shake, and it really helps me look past all the rough patches. It has some flaws, but if Konami decided to get their heads out of their butts and maybe remake this game or develop a sequel, I wouldn't mind. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a like and become a pyromaniac yourself by subscribing. Until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.